Hello and welcome to another lesson in the Advanced C Sharp course here on Tuts Plus. Now in this lesson and in the coming lessons, I'm going to take you through a little bit of the evolutionary history of a particular topic known as delegates. In this lesson, I'm going to take you through a little bit about what delegates are and how to use them and a couple interesting scenarios that I think you might be able to put them to use quickly. And then in the following lessons, I'm going to take you through some of the syntactical sugar that has been sprinkled over delegates over the past few versions of the C-sharp language and take you into the concepts of anonymous methods and lambda expressions. And ultimately, we're going to end in kind of the really big sweet spot where delegates tend to fall most commonly, which happens to be events. So stick in there for that. So let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio, and I'm going to show you a little bit about delegates. All right, so here we are back in Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project, as I've done so many times. I'll select Console Application, and now we have our beautiful boilerplate code. Now, before we can really start talking about delegates and what they are and how to use them, let's start with something that we all understand, and that's merely writing a method and then executing that method. So I'm going to jump up here within my class program, and I'm going to create a static void method, and we'll call it, say, hello with no parameters and a void return type, and it's simply going to do a console write line of, hey there. All right, that's fairly simple. We'll save, control F5. Nothing's gonna happen yet, obviously, because we haven't invoked that method. So keep that concept, that name invoke in the back of your mind, and we're gonna come into our main method, and we're simply going to execute our say hello or invoke our say hello method. So we'll do a control F5, and there we have it. Hey there, just as you would expect. All right, nothing real flashy there. So now enters the concept of a delegate. And really, if you really boil down to the absolute basics, a delegate does nothing more than kind of encapsulate a method and allow you to treat it as a first class citizen. And what do I mean by that? Well, we'll get there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually create a delegate. And the way that you do that is by specifying the delegate keyword. And then you provide to it the signature of the type of method that you want to encapsulate. So if I wanted to create a delegate that could encapsulate this say hello method here, I would specify the keyword delegate. I would then give it the methods return type, which in this case is void, and then I can give it a name. And now in this case, I can give it absolutely any name I want, so we'll just call it my delegate. And we are going to then specify the parameter list, which in this case, our say hello method doesn't take any parameters yet, so we'll just go ahead and leave it empty and semicolon, and now we can save and build, and everything will build just fine. Now, how do we use that? Well, in order to use it, you kind of have to understand what it is that the compiler does when you actually compile your code. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to create a class behind the scenes with a name of my delegate. And then you can treat that particular class or that delegate as you would any other class. So let's go ahead and check that out. So let's go back into our main method. And I'm going to create a new instance of the my delegate. And in this case, we're going to treat it exactly like a class. So we'll call this del, and we'll say this is equal to a new instance of my delegate. And if you look at the parameters here, you're going to see that it's specifying a void, open and close paren, and target. Now, what this syntax means is that it wants a method whose signature matches a void return type and an empty parameter list. Well, we just so happen to have one of those down here, namely say hello. So now I can specify my method in here, say hello, close paren, and semicolon. Now this may look a little strange to you as when you're working with methods, you would typically do an open close paren to execute it. But in this case, we don't want to execute it. We merely want to pass that, that method into this delegate so it can encapsulate it and hold on to that method so that you can execute it or invoke it at any point in time that you would wish. So let's go ahead and test that out. So now that I have my delegate reference, I can now say del.invoke and run this, control F5. And now we have two console write lines running here of hey there, one being invoked via the delegate that we've created here, and one being invoked directly as we call the say hello method. All right, well, that's kind of interesting. Well, let's take this whole 
concept of delegates and their, their syntax a little bit further before we dig into some more aspects of them. So as I mentioned before, the compiler is going to treat a delegate as a class. Now, this is exactly how you would see it done within the compiler, but obviously within C Sharp, we always get these little shortcuts of simpler ways to do things. Well, one thing that we can do, or some of the syntactical sugar that the compiler allows us to do, is to remove the assignment statement here of the new my delegate. So we can remove that part and the close parenthesis and merely assign the my delegate equal to say hello. So that's kind of nice. So now we've gotten rid of a little bit. We've saved a few keystrokes there and we can do control F5 and it will still execute as it did before. We have two instances of hi there showing up on the console. All right. And we can also take it a step further. Now when the compiler sees this and you see it sees the invoke, it knows it needs to execute this method. Well, one of the other nice little syntactical sugar things that C Sharp allows us to do is to actually get rid of this invoke statement, this invoke method. So I can just call my method del and do an open close parentheses and then when the compiler sees that it knows what it needs to do is run the invoke method so we'll remove those two control f5 and we still get hey there all right well that's getting a little bit more interesting so we can do some cool things with delegates syntactically but what can we actually do with them you know logically well, the first thing that you can do with any sort of thing within the C Sharp language that is treated as a first class object, like classes or anything of that nature, is to pass them around into and out of methods. So let's try that out. So I will create a new method, static void, and we'll call this test. And it's going to take in an instance of my delegate called del. And then once we get in here, I can simply invoke it as we've done before. And instead of doing the invocation here within main, I'm simply going to call test. Then I will pass in my instance of the delegate. Control F5, and that still works. So now we're starting to get into some very interesting characteristics of this delegate that I can pass this around and execute it wherever I would like. And in this case, you're definitely not limited to void return types and empty parameter lists. We could absolutely extrapolate this example a little bit and we can do say hello that takes a string parameter of name and then we can add in a little bit of customization we can say hey there and we'll pass in our parameter and we'll say name and now you can see that we're not going to build anymore because our delegate is expecting the signature of a void return type and no parameters so then all we really have to do is change the signature here and now everything will work just fine within our delegate. We can do a control F5. Oh, but I did forget down here. I do actually have to pass in a name. So in this case, I'll just pass in John and we'll do control F5. And now we have, hey there, John. So we can pass parameters into our delegates. And as I mentioned before, we can pass delegates out of methods as well. So we could have a static my delegate method return type on a method and say, give me my delegate and then within here we can simply return a new instance of my delegate and we can specify that we want this to execute the say hello method so we can save that now within our code up here instead of specifying it directly as say hello we can simply call the give me my delegate method and now that I have del here, I can pass that del into my other method. Let's test where we're going to write out John to the console, control F5, and there we go. We still have, hey there, John. So as you can see, we can treat this as any other object. And as you're going to see in the coming lessons, this becomes extremely powerful as we're able to do some very cool things when it comes to events and, and other aspects of, of coding. So one other little cool thing where I think this plays nicely into some of the things that I do, and maybe you'll find benefit out of this as well, when I'm creating things within my, within my applications that I would consider plugins, if you will, or an expandable or extensible aspect of my applications if I wanted to say that I had some sort of characteristic or some sort of functionality that I have written that's the base functionality of a particular piece of code and I want other people to be able to insert their own types of code that that will do some different type of operation then they can absolutely add that in there and we can execute that as long as they're sticking to this same 
signature that I'm using. So let's go through a brief example of that. So let's say we have a method here, a static void method that's called double. And it's going to take in an integer and it's going to be a num. And all this is going to do is it's going to do a console write line with a little bit of formatting here. We're going to output the number times two equals and then the answer of the operation. So we're going to pass in num and num times two. All right, seems like a fairly simple, simple example. So we'll get rid of these delegates up here and we'll simply call double with two, save and we'll do control F5. And now we have two times two equals four. All right, that's a fairly simple example. Well, let's say now we had a piece of code that we needed to do some sort of arithmetic operations, but we didn't always know what those operations were going to be, so we needed to pass those operations in. And this is where I'm talking about that kind of extensibility option where we can pass in functionality and not know about necessarily what it is at compile time, but at runtime it will execute just fine. So let's say static void, and we'll call this execute operation and we need to pass into it a particular number. So in this case, our example is going to be an integer and we need to pass in the functionality. So the way that we pass in that functionality is via delegates. So I will come up here and I will create a new delegate once again, and it's going to be a void return type and it's going to have some sort of name and we'll call it operation. And it's going to take in an integer value. So now what I can do is I can say that this execute operation is going to take in an operation, operation, and when we execute this method, it is simply going to call the operation delegate, passing in the num parameter. So now that we have this, we can say instead of executing double directly, we can create a new operation equal to double, and now we can call our execute operation method passing in two and operation, which is actually not going to work because I need to specify a name for this operation and specify op, save control F5, and there we go, we see two times two equals four. Well, now what if we have some other operation that we needed to be able to execute? I could simply copy this particular method and now let's say we had a triple operation. Still taking in an integer number, this time it's going to do times three, and now we can put in three, do a save, and now I can create an operation double, and then I can call op equal to triple, and once again execute my operation on two and op. Save control F5. Now we see two times two equals four and two times three equals six. So now we've been able to execute this operation multiple times using different methods that are being encapsulated within that delegate. So before I let you go, I'm going to show you one other cool little trick that is exposed for delegates and such operations are in such a manner as this. As you can see here, I initialized my operation delegate to be double initially, and then I passed it into my method, and then I changed the delegate to be set to triple and then I execute it again. Well, if you always wanted to do this or or execute your delegate multiple times, you can do something that's called chaining. So one way that we can do that, and that's a very interesting thing as well, is we can create this operation op and set it equal to double and then we can also do a concatenation or a plus equals to triple which at the end of the day merely means op is equal to op plus triple and if we save that and if you think about it for a minute wondering what this might do by chaining these things together and if you kind of get an idea in your mind now I'll do a control F5 it's actually going to execute each one of those operations in sequence. So we have two times two equals four, two times three equals six. And we could do this as many times as we wanted. I could copy this line, copy, and paste in a few more lines here and do a control F5. And now you're going to see each time, each time that operation is concatenated on or chained on to that existing delegate, it's going to execute it that many times. So we have one, two, three, four, five executions here. And the same way that you can add things to the delegate via chaining, you can also remove them. So I could also do an op minus equals triple. 
and it's going to remove the last one that's there. And so now we're only going to get four. And if you wanted to remove the double, you could do that one also. You could do op minus equal to double. And now, excuse me, I forgot my semicolon. Semicolon, control F5. And now we're only going to get three. So this is very interesting, and this is going to become very obvious to you when we get into the lesson about events. But I just want to kind of put this in the back of your mind to, so, to show you how powerful that these delegates really are and what they're kind of used for. So just keep in the back of your mind that delegates are a way that you can encapsulate functionality or encapsulate a method and treat it as a first class object and pass it around as arguments, as return types. You can chain them together, you can remove them from the chain and execute them all in sequence whenever you would like. So just keep that in the back of your mind and I will take you to the next lesson or to the next evolutionary lesson of delegates where we're going to jump into the concepts of anonymous methods and lambda expressions. And I'll see you then.